Good evening, Excellency ladies and gentlemen. Welcome once again to Cambodia Global Dialogue of Southeast Asia TV. Uh, tonight we'll be talking to something that's very different than all the previous uh, uh, dialogue that we had on economics, trade, tourism, agriculture. Tonight we're going to move to something a little bit more philosophical. As a matter of fact, the, the theme today is about uh, philosophy. Philosophy and media, for that matter, because, you know, I have the pleasure to have with me today Stuart Allen Becker, who is the editor of special report of the uh, Phnom Penh Post, which is, a one, uh, which is the largest uh, English and Khmer uh, newspaper in Cambodia. They have a, a readership of over 90,000 people. So, uh, Stuart, uh, welcome to the show. Sipana, it's great to be with you today. Yeah. Well, look, uh, I, I, I'm really enjoy the fact that by pure happenstance, we happen to know each other through the right story, which, which, is, which is great. Uh, and I'm glad that uh, you mentioned that, you know, you like philosophy. And because in my mind, it triggered, well, wait a minute, you know, uh, maybe I should have something on something soft side rather than a pure economic, pure law, pure trade, through WTO, globalization. <laughs> so f philosophy in media is quite interesting. But uh, Stuart, I want to give you one or two minutes to introduce yourself a bit so that the, the, the crowd uh, know your background a bit. Sure, sure, Sipana. Um, I'm uh, 50 years old. I was born in Japan. My you're, father was... You're, you're one year younger than me. <laughs> I have to call you younger brother, <laughs> philosophically. <laughs> uh, um, and I've uh, been in Cambodia for just over a year. Uh, as editor for Special Reports, and it is a real privilege and pleasure to be in Cambodia and watch this place develop. It's a, I think it's one of the most energetic places in the world. Um, I've been a newspaper guy for 25 years and a writer. I've been a writer since I was 10 years old. I published my first article at age 10. <laughs> and uh, I really enjoy what I do. And uh, over the years, I've developed a, um, you know, as articulated in Buddhism, Twila Ban La An, how to say? Twila Akra Ban Akra. Okay. And that means you do good, you get good, you yes. do bad, you get bad. Yes. And this is the core of every um, uh, moral philosophy that's worth looking at. Mm. Uh, it's in Christianity, it's in Islam, it's in, in, in every moral code. And uh, it really works, and it, the truth bears repeating. Mm. And so at the newspaper, what we try to do is, is use that as an instrument for those kinds of teachings. Mm. And for my own part, um, uh, I was at the South China Morning Post in Hong okay. Kong for um, almost seven years. Mm. And that's when I met um, David Armstrong. He was mm. our editor, and he's one of the... Uh, um, important long-time media personalities mm. of Asia mm. and uh, uh, I was teaching at a language school mm. in Thailand for the last five years before I came here and uh, I picked up the Bangkok Post and I saw his name in there and he was the big boss of the Bangkok Post, oh, okay. the group chairman. Yeah. So I sent him an email and hey, we reunited after 15 years. We yeah. had been together in Hong Kong and months he came to my wedding. I have mm. a Thai wife mm. and um, uh, he said, hey, I got a job for you in Cambodia. Mm. And my first reaction to Cambodia, and I'm a global media personality mm. yes. too, yes. and I, I'm well read. My first mm. reaction to Cambodia was, I was kind of scared. Mm. Was it going to be dangerous? Mm. The Khmer Rouge history? Yes. And, uh, you know, I thought, what, are they going to get me, you know, with a bayonet or something? Mm. And, uh, and I've got to say, um, Cambodia is marvelous and safe and uh, wonderful to be here. And I think one of the primary challenges of mm. Cambodia today mm. is to inform the rest of the planet Earth mm. yes. that you are stable yes, yes, and yes. steady and open for business. Yes. That's important. Yes. I think the Kingdom of Wonder campaign is a really mm. good campaign. I yes. think they should do that again yes. by double mm. and then really let the world know mm. that the past is in the past mm. and that uh, Cambodia is very much open for business. You know, I, I, I like so because you know, in, uh, in recent years, I see one of the development of the Pen Post was that the special edition, you know, that uh, gave a chance for the readership to appreciate in, in many different angles the, 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 the perspective of a particular thing, right? And I, I was quite pleased, uh, you know, when I read a few of your special report. And the last one was awesome on, on the rise, for example. Oh, thank you. you know, it, it, it's not a story. We have this event there and there, the government do this. It's really a perspective from the policymaker, from the private sector, from the academic, from everybody. Then you, you sort of give a chance for people to see 
the whole dimension of a particular sector. Right. And, and this is something that, you know, uh, not many, you know, uh, even though the Cambodian uh, newspaper, they, they don't go as far as making that effort. They're more story reporting, but they, they don't give a chance for a wider contribution from a different part of society. Exactly. And the philosophy of special reports, the newspaper is... Um, is an ongoing media entity. The game in media is to get the information to the public quicker than the other media. Yes. So, and that goes on with the news desk. We've got the largest information gathering force in Cambodia, mm. and so they're always making phone calls, finding out what's going on, and that's the daily work of yes. the newspaper. Now, my work is different. I go in depth, so yes. we choose topics yes. like the rice form, yes. and then we tied it in with the conference, mm. which was mm. very successful. Yes, uh, very successful. And I have to hand it to you guys for putting together a clearly articulated rice policy that will benefit Cambodians mm. instead mm. of having the unmilled yes. rice go to Vietnam and Thailand yes. for milling and put all those people yes. to work and all that bran and all those good animal feeds to work to make a policy mm. to get it done here. That is an enlightened thing and so when I get my hands on mm. something like that mm. I'm pleased to do a report in depth for the readers yeah. uh, to, to, to see what's going so, on. See, and this is where the link between the theme of today, which is philosophy and media. To me, many people, you know, are very, sort of like, a, uh, it's like a disjunction or a dichotomy where they view media sometimes, you know, uh, some positively, some negatively. But I believe that media have a very important role in our uh, society, particularly in, in case of Cambodia. You know, uh, the Minister of Information, Excellency Kyo Kanyarut, is uh, he, 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 he's a journalist himself by, by profession. Sure. And, and I see we, we have, look, how many TV we have, how, how many uh, print media we have, so many things. But to me, the, the important thing is that how do we work with the media to make sure that media also help contribute to the development of the country. And this is where I see your role, like the, the fact that you take the time to cover this, the story on rice. It's, it's just one anecdote, but there are so many on anecdotes where the contribution in media is very important. Right. Um, one of the things that I wanted to do, and this is unusual, um, I see Cambodians as some of the very, very best people in the world for doing more with less because of the history here. Now, the essence of all business is more with less. Mm. So if you're in any business, you're trying to get your goods and services for a lower price and sell them for a higher price, mm. and, and you're trying to get scales of efficiency in mm. every business. It's, mm. it's the essence of business is yeah. more with less. Yeah. And you look at some of the tuk-tuks, you look at some of the overloaded motorbikes, <laughs> and you find that Cambodians <laughs> are marvelous <laughs> at taking meager resources and getting maximum benefit. Yes. Now, they don't even realize it themselves because they've had to do it out of necessity, but they need to yes, be applauded yes. for this. <laughs> and it's marvelous. If you look at more wasteful societies, uh, the Cambodians can take a minimal amount of materials mm -hmm. and make it into maximum use. And that needs to be rewarded. I, I've been wanting to do a photo essay on, uh, you know, uh, overloaded motorbikes and tuk-tuks and, uh, and all these sorts of things. More you know? with less, right? More with, with less. less. It's the essence yes. of Cambodia. Yeah. Well, uh, Stuart, you know, I know you are quite... Uh, influenced by one of the world leader in philosophy, particularly Professor Noam Chomsky, who is a, a professor at the uh, MIT, uh, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. You know, my son one day, he, he's, he's a young kid, he's 10 years old, he told me that when I grow up, I want to go to MIT. But anyway, he's an engineer, so I don't think he have a chance to meet Noam Chomsky. But tell me why Noam Chomsky? Why he influenced you? your life. Right. Well, I took my son down the Mekong River in a small plastic boat in 2006 from Savannakhet to Vientiane, mm. and there's a little town on the, um, on the uh, Thai side called Muktahan. And I returned to the USA where I was running a, a water purification equipment factory and uh, quit my job. I sold my Mustang convertible. Mm. Oh, wow. And, <laughs> and I moved to Thailand, and I started teaching English to a bunch of monks, Buddhist mm. monks at a Wat, the Nins, mm. the young monks. Yeah, yeah. And I taught by singing. Hmm. And uh, I'd take, you know, top 40 songs that were very catchy, write them on the board, and get hmm. these monks all singing. Wow. And I had, I had 
extraordinary results mm. in rapid language acquisition. Mm. So if you um, look how you acquired English, or mm. you look how you acquired mm. Khmer language, mm. Mm. what happened was is it was not formally trained to you. You mm. were just a little kid around the house, mm. and you picked up speaking, pretty soon you're speaking. Mm. Now, that is how all humans acquire language. Mm. So w I sought to copy that. Mm. And one of the world leaders in linguistics is Professor Chomsky. Mm. So during the course of my teaching, I, I sent him an email. Mm. I was watching some videos of his on YouTube, and then I sent him an email, and he answered my email. Mm. You know, and he's a famous professor with um, 36 doctor degrees, 36. And uh, so, 36. yeah, and he, he's, he's considered the father of modern linguistics. So, so there's buildings named after him in India. Uh, he's written like 150 books, and um, uh, he changed the way all academia approaches the study of the human mind. Wow. wow. A, a, a astonishing accomplishment. He's like the Einstein of linguistics. Mm -hmm. He's of that scale. My and then he took special time with me because oh, he awesome. behaves according awesome. to the principles articulated of universality, mm. which means even little old me who was having an apartment in remote mm. Thailand yeah. and had an internet connection and emailed him, he mm. took the time for me. It didn't matter to him how mm. big or small I mm. was. Okay. And so this was a, a profoundly uh, uh, enriching thing mm. to, be, to be in contact mm. with him. He's, he's, mm. And he's quite ordinary in his behavior and friendly. You wow, know? Wow. But it, so a lot of your greatest people um, are, are, have deep humility. Hmm. However great they are, they yeah. still behave with humility. How does it affect your work as it relates? Because I, I see, uh, maybe now I understand better, because the, the way you approach an interview, when you interviewed me for the right story, when you interviewed my friend who, for the right story, I see a lot of philosophical way of uh, thing rather than purely a factual thing. Tell me this, 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 you know. But, but it's very philosophical. Right. The, the, the empathy to understand, you know, the other side, for example. Absolutely, um, Sipana. You treat people like you want to be treated. So if, you're, if you have an interview subject, mm. you put a space for him to feel comfortable in. Mm. And then you are very interested and mm. you give excellent listening to that person. Mm. And, and, and you're good at it. You're doing it with me right now. So it's about creating a Thanks. space for somebody yeah. and, and, and giving them the ability to feel relaxed and mm. ease and comfortable. And then they can say what they want mm. and, and is respectful. You know, so it has respect at, deep at its core. You know, I, in passing, you know, we, we share a similar background in the sense that uh, we're about the same age, you know. I'm one year older, as I said. We sort of grew up during the same tumultuous era of the 70s, the Vietnam War, you know, uh, and everything. So while you were playing pinball, <laughs> I was digging ditches during the killing field, right? Uh, what, what, what is the view? I mean, if you look back in retrospect, your father being a, 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 a pilot, well decorated, and you know, a US uh, military pilot, uh, how, how do you reconcile, you know? You, now you're as a philosopher, uh, you know, a philosopher, uh, as an editor covering human story, that sort of thing. How do you very, reconcile that? Very good question, Supana. I, I have to say that um, in moral universality, if I'm going to be kind to you, uh, I open the door for you to be kind to me. Mm. Similarly, mm. if I'm going to be hostile to mm. you, I open the door for you to be hostile to me. Mm. So, t once again, twila aban la, twila kra, mm. bana kra. Okay. Now that, mm. that, that is a universal mathematical principle yes. and it works. Yes. Whenever you internalize a philosophy, you'll have mm. the outcome. Now the same works between nations, mm. small or large, the mm. principles are the same. Mm. So um, if you're a nation and you want to go to war with another nation and you want to bomb their people, you have to ask yourself, are they doing something so bad that we would agree that uh, that, that if we were doing it, that it would be okay to bomb us, mm. to attack us. Mm. If the answer is yes, you have the moral authority to mm. do it. If the mm. answer is no, you don't have the moral mm. authority to mm. do it. And if you're going to go with a population of people and send them off to battle somewhere, mm. you better have the moral authority. Mm. You know, and it, it's, it's a weighty thing. Mm. I mean, my family was destroyed by the Vietnam War. Mm. My, my father came back. Mm. Uh, he was... Um, he had been through, he was a helicopter pilot with the um, first air cavalry. Mm. And um, he was a, um, like an air ambulance. So mm. there would be soldiers 
pinned down in the mm. jungle fighting. Mm. And then he'd arrive on his helicopter. They'd all jump on, mm. put the wounded on, and he'd fly out in a hail of bullets. Mm. And he got shot down three times. Mm. And his mentality and behavior was shaped by that. Mm. So he was a little bit, uh, you know, traumatized mm. by the war. And my, 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 my mother divorced him. Mm. And then so as a result, I had to get tough mm. early. Mm. And this is all traceable back to the, I think, flawed uh, and I didn't understand it at the time, but mm. with coaching from Professor Chomsky and others, mm -hmm. I, I've I've had uh, the the time to reflect on mm. on these moral principles mm. and mm. find out w where they went where mm. they went wrong. Yeah. Now, in order to make the distinction more clearly, communism, uh, as practiced by Stalin and and, and other Mao and others. Uh, is very very different from what Marx wrote. Mm. Okay, mm. so so we see that mm. most people, it evolves into kind of a gangster thing when mm. you try to impose communism on people, and it leads mm. to massive suffering. Mm. So it was worth resisting, mm. and the United States did resist it. They had mm. the containment policy, and and they won. The Soviet Union collapsed. Mm. This is marvelous. Mm. When the Soviet Union collapsed, that's when Cambodia really changed mm. because the money uh, from the Soviet Union through Vietnam dried mm. up mm. and Hun Sen and his people very intelligently said, mm. okay, that's over. Mm. Now we're going to go with mm. the free market mm. around mm. the world. Mm. And that's, uh, that was an enlightened decision. Yeah, yeah. So, so it was worth resisting, but Vietnam War never met the minimum moral criteria and therefore it led to massive unnecessary suffering and massive mm. unnecessary suffering um, by Cambodians. Mm. And, but, but you know, philosophically, I mean, uh, if you look at the moral value of uh, Cambodian you know, versus the West, for example, we, you know, I, I, I spent four years in the killing field also, but you do not look at me as a very resentful, bitter, angry man. I make peace with it. You know, I, I, I don't forget, but I forgive. Uh, from, from a Buddhist perspective, I, I look forward. And I talk to many people that I know. We want to move forward. The past is to be remembered. But we don't want to be in chain, yeah, you know. Strangled by the past. Exactly. Uh, Cambodia have an opportunity to, to move forward. The younger generation have that chance. And I think this is where I would say not the battle of culture, but it's the understanding of each other culture. You know, how the West view certain moral issue, uh, certain humanism. But how we, the, uh, the, the East, the, the, the Asian, the Cambodian, we also have our own value on how we look at the world. Yes, and Buddhism has a, um, a lot of people who are Asian can look at the struggles and strife of Southeast Asia from the last 40 years and then have a, a view like you have, forgiving, resigned view. An Occidental view is a more retribution-oriented view. Mm. You know, they, they want people to pay or account mm. for what they've done. Mm. And, and I think... Um, when you get to moral universality, you can find truth in both cases. Mm. Mm. But this is a classic difference between Buddhist-influenced Asian mm. culture mm. and, let's say, Christian-influenced, mm. uh, you know, Occidental mm. culture. It's a classic difference between the two, and there's a little mm. bit of bumping. But you're a guy that really bridges both mm. sides yeah. uh, because of your years in, in Switzerland and so on. Yeah. Uh, it, and, and that's key. Yeah, uh, I think because you can you can move easily between the populations and offer understanding on both sides. Speaking of a uh, of understanding, I, I want I, I see that media, like I said before, can play a powerful role in the shaping the development of this country. Cambodia is going through a lot of uh, dynamic change in the economic term. Next year, we'll be chairing the, the, the uh, you know, ASEAN. ASEAN That's you know, fantastic, yes. by the way. And, and I, I see one thing that, you know, our, our media, our journalists are not there yet, you know, on the substantive level to cover substantive story. You know, our officials are still a bit shy to deal with media. I believe that media you know, has a big role to play. And to cite a, a, a small yet, you know, phenomenal anecdote is that during my years of negotiating the WTO, I have worked the media uh, in, in favor of, of the country, of the government. You know, uh, in fact, one day advice when, when I, I, I joined the government as vice minister in 1999, I went to see uh, Excellency Kirk uh, who happened to be my brother-in-law, I mean, you know, uh, I say, look, I'm not a politician, but the post I'll be holding will be political. Uh, help me out. And he say, look, the media is important. 
you know, there's two people, two professions you shouldn't fight. One is you don't fight with a lawyer because that's their job is to fight, <laughs> right? And the other one is the media because they always have the final say. But the moral of the story from what I got from that meeting was that, look, work the media. If you don't talk to them, they will talk to somebody else. And when they talk to somebody else, it's not necessarily the view that you have. Right. So to me, transposing that into the current dynamic development of this economy, how do we help the government official? How do we help our academic? How do we help our private sector? Excellent question. Our civil society to work with the media for the positive contribution for our society. Okay, thank you for a wonderful question. Um, Sipana, it's a training issue, okay? So we're gonna take very talented global media people and we're going to put them together with young Cambodians. Now there's a tendency in Cambodia and Asian culture in general. This is true in Japan, it's true in China, it's true in Vietnam. There's a fatherly leader, mm. Akna, or, you yes. know, and he's the boss of the company, he's yeah, the boss sure, of the family, sure, he's the sure. boss of the country, he's the mm. boss. Mm. And so what you do is you pay enormous respect to the boss mm. and the boss tends to be always right. Mm. Now, in your Western approach, you would have um, you can make points by opposing the boss and you say, boss, you're wrong. And here's how you're wrong. And, and then the boss will say, hey, great. You saved me a lot of money mm. because you said I was wrong and you enabled me to shift tactics. Our company made more profits. Mm. Our country made more gains. Our family made more gains. We got more education, mm. etc." Okay, mm. so this is a cultural phenomenon of, now, Let's not tear down the respect. Hmm. The respect is sure. fantastic. Respect so so yeah. do respect your elders. Do yeah. respect the people in the office. Hmm. But make a little opening in the culture hmm. so exactly. that you can yes. pull the boss aside and yeah. you can say, boss, if you shift your tactics hmm. and you don't go this way, but yeah. you go this way, yeah. I think you'll get better results. Yeah, exactly. That's the opening yeah. that we need to make. Now, yes. when we expand it broader into the training of young Cambodians, hmm. it's... It, uh, the principles uh, mm. apply. Yeah. So you can take a um, a young shy Cambodian from the mm. province who has a, in their mind that the world is a big, complicated, and difficult place, and how could they possibly uh, have a role in this m distant, complicated, mm. difficult thing? Well, mm. Sipana. You are a classic example. You went to Geneva and you negotiated the WTO on behalf of Cambodia. That's very inspiring. And here you are, a little kid who survived the killing field. Yes. So what you need to do is get in front of audiences of hundreds of young Cambodians, yes. speaking Khmer, yes. and then give them your experience yes. and guys like you. And this is how the country will change from shy obedience yes. into thinking individuals. Yes. And I guarantee you that when people think for themselves, you have a better outcome. Mm. Thinking for yourself is key. Mm. Uh, is is this or that good or bad? It's not up to me. Mm. Up to you. Mm. Yes. It's your opinion. Yes. And, and, and to foster and promote a culture in the media mm. for young Khmers and develop a media culture. And the Phnom Penh mm. Post is very much involved in this. We have, we're doing training right now. We have, I think mm. it's called the Southeast Asia or Institute of Media or something like mm. that. I, I've given some lectures myself. Other members of our staff give lectures. We have young mm. international people and young mm. Khmers mm. Uh, attending the classes, and we are out to promote a mm. culture of vigorous media where you can you know, be respectful yeah. and still get the really good information mm. to the public, the essential information to the public. So uh, on that note, I have to say that uh, I have something in mind because next year when we chair you know, the ASEAN, you know, I like full Phnom Penh Post uh, training, capacity building, to be able to have a special training on ASEAN issue, different e economic, trade, whatever, right? So that our Cambodian journalists who will be covering the story at the summit in Phnom Penh, at the co ministerial conference in Simbrip, can ask a Indonesian minister or a head of state of a, another ASEAN country, Excellency, you know, what is your view on this? What is your view on that? And I want them to fly back to say, wow, the Cambodian journalists, they got the issue right. They're not just covering the story. I so, agree with you. I agree with you. And you can be an essential help. We at the Post can be the help. The other media can help. And we have to, uh, like I say, take shy people who tend to always agree with the boss and get them to the point where they are able to deal with any leader or anybody 
the same as they would with a member mm. of their family out in the province to get to the point where they yes. can do that. that and that's essential and that's that's training it yeah, takes yeah. training so you have to like get a room full of people you got to go through um practice runs and 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 practice the dialogue yeah, yeah. and then you have to get them into press conferences mm -hmm. where people are asking hard questions they that's can copy that it. so i think it's a lot about being injected yes, into yes. the scene and 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 learning from yes. their colleagues so we're running out of time i have i want to give you uh, the last word but i cannot help but to say you're an internationalist you travel around the world you see different country you see different media culture let me ask you a very brutal question. How free is Cambodian media very. as compared to the rest of the world? Uh, we are so lucky, Sipana, to be in Cambodia. I cannot stress this. Hun Sen and his people have done a marvelous thing. They let us be free. We're freer than Vietnam, freer than China, freer than Myanmar. I'd even say freer than Thailand. There's less, there's less meddling in the media here. We really have an extraordinary possibility to do something of lasting value through the media here. Mm -hmm. When people are looking for answers and they're running out of, of uh, help, uh, the media is something that they can use, that they can get their hands into. The development of a thriving media is absolutely wonderful in a Cambodian context, and every media, even our competitors. Mm. It's just, and then that's philosophical. When you get information information to the people, they make better mm. decisions. Mm. When people make better decisions, you have a better mm. society. It's just that simple. <laughs> so thank you so much. I think on, uh, I, let me say on behalf of the audience and the studio, uh, I thank, a big thank you for you uh, as a friend to taking the time, as a new friend to take the time to come uh, and share with us your perspective on philosophy, on uh, on war, on philosophy, on peace, uh, and as well injecting your professionalism in the area of media. So I, I hope the, the audience would, 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 would appreciate some of this insight, that, uh, some of this philosophical insight that you have brought to the table there. So You're thank welcome. you very much. Yes. You're welcome. Yeah. It's a pleasure to be with you. So Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's uh, unfortunately a topic like this uh, required uh, two days of uh, uh, of exchange, but we have a snapshot of uh, for just 30 minutes, you know, a bit of everything. But uh, uh, what I want to conclude is by saying that, you know, uh, the media is there. You know, they serve an important role in society, in the development of our, uh, our country. It is a mirror of what's happening in a country, and we should give them respect. But at the same time, we should work with them. Uh, we should not look at media as a, just a confrontation issue, as you know, but 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 it's a partnership, right? And and I must say personally that I have uh, you know in the past in the context of the WTO accession, really worked the media, and that's why historically in the in in the annual trade negotiation WTO, Cambodia's label is the fastest uh, country I have negotiated accession, and I don't think we could have done that without the media, without the outreach to the population, without the information that uh, the people know that, you know, op opening economy is good, entering the WTO is very good. I could not do it alone. I mean, the media is there. The government could not do it alone. So on that note, I, I think there's definitely a serious uh, appreciation of the role media. But you have to have a touch of philosophy behind. So good night, and I'll talk to you next week. <laughs>